Okay, so Speckle is growing. Now, one of the most interesting functionalities I can expect in the near future is Grasshopper servers. So, how do they work? Well, you define an input and an output. You connect them together. Uh, you can think of this as a remote over the internet data transfer cluster. There's nothing to it. So, like this, I define basically what are my inputs, what the server can accept and what it can work with. And in here I define what it sends out. So as a very basic quick example, I'm going to demonstrate an addition server. Uh, how do you access this server? Well, in a separate instance of Grasshopper, you can pull up a client component. Uh, and the first thing you want to do when you do that is set your server ID. Now, the moment that you create the server, you get, it gets a unique ID, which you can access by right-clicking and say, copy server ID to clipboard, click, paste this in here, and then my client component updates with the inputs and outputs of the server. Now, the cool thing is, like whatever you define in here gets updated in your client component as well, in pretty much all your client components. But for now, let's keep it simple. So I'm gonna call this sum, and I'm call this number one, and number two. Fair enough, you can see my, comp my client component updated with the correct names. Now let's add two numbers together, 12 and 12. Connect them in together, make a panel. Whoop, let's make the text bigger. Fair enough. Now, by default, the client component doesn't stream its requests instantly, it's paused. So you can either click on send request and then bam, 24, or you can enable live streaming just by clicking resume. So now, whenever something changes, I'm actually sending these two numbers over here. I'm adding them up inside the server component and then I'm streaming it back as a sum. Now, this is quite funky. Now, let me show you what happens when you have multiple requests that take longer to compute inside the server. This is rather easy. Let's simulate a complex calculation with a scripting component that's gonna take X and Y's inputs. And the only tricky thing that it's gonna do, it's gonna pause main thread for let's say 250 milliseconds and then it's gonna add up x with y and put that into its output now bah. so now when i'm sending multiple requests to my server you can see because i'm taking quite a long time to calculate that addition there's a queue building up. Now this queue is then being sent back to my client the moment it's computed. It's quite easy. Now of course you can have multiple clients connected to the same server. So copy the server ID, set it up. You can see stuff gets updated. And let's see what happens when I send multiple requests to the same client. Now, I'm gonna unpause this. If I send a request from client number two, client number two gets updated. Now, if I send a request from client number one, client number one gets updated. If I send requests from both, as in this case, then as soon as one of the job queues is done, then it's done back to the individual client. So streaming numbers back and forth is not that interesting. So I'm going to show you now, I've set up a little server definition that's a bit more complex. So what it does, it takes a set of preps and then contours them by a contour distance and also creates some sort of wireframe around them. So um, what it streams back is the surfaces that it creates from the contour planes and the area of each surface. So let's create a little client for it. Client, bam. Set your server ID. Copy my server ID here. 
paste it back. And let's first of all rename this inputs and uh, rename this server outputs. So sorry. So this one is floor planes. And these are area floor areas and it's the wireframe. There we go. So I've got here, I've tested it before, I've got here two amazing reps. Let's start with one. I'm moved up in Rhino. Um, let's quickly get it in. Stream it and then let's set a con to a distance of 2.42. And let's see what we get out. So, send request. Bam! As you can see, I've got trink surfaces, the area values, and the wireframes. So, pretty much the important point to get across is that any kind of, or pretty much almost any kind of, uh, Rhino object can be streamed back and forth. So two more things I want to show you actually. So based on the same functionality and backend that actually the server works, um, I've developed two more components actually, the speckle stream sender and the speckle stream receiver, which are kind of dumbed down versions of that without the logic. They're, they allow for much more flexibility in organizing your files. So how do they work? The speckle stream sender is basically um, accepting data and then it brought it casts that data to a key so anyone who's going to be listening into this ID will get the data that the sender broadcasts out so for example here I have a very basic definition that takes a couple of preps in and then I want to broadcast out the floor planes the areas of those floor planes, let's say, and the volumes of the preps. Simple, right? So I'm just going to say floor planes. Um, these are the areas. And these are the volumes. Now, of course, in a grasshopper definition, far, far away on a different computer or wherever, you set up a speckle stream receiver and what you do you basically tell him to listen into this key so just copy stream id to clipboard right click on key paste and then now once i send something through then i'm gonna get it out so right now i'm just sending in the curves the areas and the volumes so it's quite basic so i've got three preps oh yeah got three preps um, so I've got a duplicate prep in here, nice clean modeling. And, but the interesting feature is, so of course, you've got the same kind of uh, bi-directional real-time control as you are used to with the server. The nice thing is, is that you can actually, because this goes through the internet, you can view this stream online. Um, Okay, yeah, let's a little bit of hack. Let's change the server structure a bit. So what happens, this is the data that gets passed through. Now, this is not very interesting, but actually what happens if you say query stream ID, and then you say uh, XML equals true, then you get it as an XML file. Now, this is quite cool. Why is it cool? Because you can pop it in an Excel. There's more options as well. So for example, you can say group names equals areas. So I'm just going to get the areas. <coughs> uh, why is this cool? It's cool because if I copy this URL and then I drop it in Excel. Uh, okay. And then I say data, get external data from the web. I, okay, bear with Microsoft for a bit. Okay, it doesn't allow me to delete all this. So I say this, go. 
and then I say import it's gonna download it and voila you've got basically this data streamed in so volumes are here areas are here and you've got this data streamed in from Grasshopper to Excel with no hassle um, nice thing is is that you can have a refresh so let's say I change something in here in my grasshopper definition so now I have less areas I will click refresh voila there you go and I've got the areas that are streamed from here in Excel pretty much live that's it